Hello everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you what a black box asset is and uh, how you can create one yourself. So to begin with, what is a black box asset? Black box asset is essentially a, a tool that you've created in Houdini, right? Uh, an HDA, Houdini Digital Asset, that does not allow a user to go inside and modify its content. It also does not allow a user to view the insides, which makes this great for for example, creating tools that you'd like to sell on any sort of marketplace. All right, so as you can see, uh, this is a black box asset. The way that you know that is it has a lock here, and when you try and double click it to enter it, it says permission denied. All right, so uh, how do we create one of those? First of all, let's just try and create our own um, little tool. So I'm just gonna drop down a sphere, then we're gonna say, uh, random selection from labs let's do that all right all good let's have it create a group let's select primitives uh, okay and then we drop down a poly extrude to create a very simple little tool have that be set to selected and then now um, what we should get once we change the ratio and the random seed is just randomly extruded primitives. All right, so let's make this into a tool. And the way we do that is just selecting our nodes, pressing the subnet uh, button here, and then just right click the subnet and say digital asset create new. We're then just gonna create uh, this HDA. I'm just gonna call it my tool. I'm gonna say the author is me. I'm not needing a branch. And then the rest we can just leave as is. And as you can see, it is going to save it in the um, the preferences directory for Houdini. All right, so we have our little tool. First of all, let's just promote a couple of parameters so that we can, um, uh, you know, modify how it looks. So let's promote a ratio, let's promote random seed, and let's also promote the distance for the extrusion. Hit apply, close that, and then just say save node type and then match current definition. So as you can see, we now have a tool that allows us to, you know, uh, modify the properties of what happens based on parameter values. And, uh, you know, we'd be able to dive inside to see what happens there. And we'd also be able to allow the editing of contents and make changes to this node. So now let's say, you know, we've created our, our awesome little tool and we want to sell it somewhere or we want to share it with someone without them being able to dive inside and make any changes or even see how it works. Well, the way we can do that is by creating a black box asset. So just select your node here, go to assets, and then just click create black box asset from selection. And what that's going to do is it's going to pop up this window here where it says it is going to create a black box asset from a tool with this namespace, right? So Paul, my tool one. It says you will not be able to inspect or modify the contents of the black box asset. So it is very important to know that once you black box an asset, you cannot unblack box it. So when you save it, make sure that you don't overwrite the node that you just uh, created, right? The original. You want to always keep a copy of the original. So what you could do instead is select the node or the HDA file that your original had and just add underscore black boxed to it. And then now when you save it, you'll see that in this bar that we have here at the top, which by the way, if you do not have it, you can go to assets, assets definition toolbar, and just set it to show always. And then now what you'll see is when we have this drop down here on the left, we can see that we have one definition of this tool, right? We have, we have this one that we created. But on the right one, where you can select what the source file is for that definition, we can see that we now have two. We have one that says black boxed and we says one that has the original. So when we set to the original, we can dive inside. And when we set it to black boxed, you'll see that we will no longer be able to dive inside. You also notice that in the right click menu, you can no longer allow editing of contents. So when we want to, for example, uh, uh, send this tool to someone, what we would do is we would essentially send them the file that has underscore black boxed. And if you already have a hip file where my tool was used, doesn't matter, it will just correctly load the node and uh, its functionality 
but do that by loading the black box version. So then the question you might ask is, okay, so I've black boxed my asset. How do I make changes to it? Or how do I publish updates to it? Well, the way you do that is first of all, switch back to the original, which is why it is important that you keep the original. You then modify it the way you normally do, right? So for example, let's add a color stop here, or let's just change the color here. So let's just make it green instead of blue. All right, and then we'll say uh, save node type and then match current definition. And now when we switch to the black box one, you'll see that obviously it does not have those changes yet. So the way we update our black box definition is once again, select our node, go to assets, create black box asset from selection, and then just select the black box HDA definition, hit accept. And then once we have that, we can now see that both our black box definition as well as the original have the same changes. And that is what a black box asset is, as well as how you can use it, how you can update it, and how you could send it to your users. Enjoy.